Good evening. I'm Barbara Mead. I'm one of the founders of Politics and Prose. And as you see this evening, we have C-SPAN here. So we've moved our is, is the mic working back there? I see somebody just running toward the mic. We have um, just one mic here um, to, uh, to ask questions. So uh, if, you, uh, if you need access to this mic and you're sitting over there, you can go around back there. Um, I want to welcome David Quammond, uh, who's come uh, this evening to talk about his new book, The Spillover. This is the first time David's been to politics and prose. He lives in Bozeman, Montana. That's why I think that if he's, he's written many, many books, and uh, including The Song of the Dodo, which won the John Burroughs Medal for Natural History Writing. Uh, David holds honorary degrees from Colorado College and Montana, Montana State University, where he served as the Wallace Stegner Professor of Western American Studies. He's also won the National um, Magazine Award three times for articles in a wide variety of magazines, including Esquire, The Atlantic, and The Rolling Stone. Uh, the third of these awards Magazine Awards was for a National Geographic story um, called um, Was Darwin Wrong? Uh, at National Geographic now, he has the title Contributing Writer, that's with capital letters, uh, which uh, uh, gives him the, uh, well, which requires him to write, did you say three articles a year, David? Three, three, three articles a year for National Geographic. He describes his beats as field biology, evolutionary biology, theoretical ecology, and conservation. But after this evening, I hope you will uh, have as much appreciation for his physical strength and stamina as you have for his writing talents. Uh, in his field research, he treks Indiana Jones style through jungles and rainforests that most of us would never want to set foot in. Uh, tonight you're going to learn a new word, zoonosis, uh, at least I learned that new word. Um, zoonosis is, uh, zoonoses, I'm, that's plural, are infectious diseases that originate in animals and spread to humans. Uh, for those of you who read The Hot Zone, that was, I can't believe it, about 20 years ago, 18 to be ex uh, exact. Uh, you had a very early exposure to this frightening scenario uh, that David uh, has uh, then elaborated on a great deal in his new book, Sp Spillover. Pub Publishers Weekly gave Spillover a starred review and said, this is a quote, this is a frightening but critically important book for anyone interested in learning about the prospects of the world's next major pandemic. So here's David Quammen to talk about his book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Uh, and thank you all. Nice to be here at Politics and Prose. As Barbara said, um, I haven't been here before. Live a little bit too far away and don't publish books that often. It takes me about six or eight years to get one of these things done. Uh, I'm going to talk um, talk informally um, for 20 or 25 minutes. Uh, is that what you said would be about right, Barbara? Yeah, about the book and uh, the, the subject and to some extent about the writing of the book. And then you, you know this drill pr better than I do, I'm sure. Then we'll, then we'll hear from you. We'll have some conversation. Uh, as Barbara explained, this is a book about... Uh, scary new emerging diseases and where they emerge from. And where they emerge from generally is wildlife, is from other species, non-human animals, and in particular um, non-human animals other than our domesticated animals. Um, there's, uh, if you've been following uh, certain stories in the news over the last few months, you know that one point of entry uh, into this subject is the daily newspaper itself. You've probably heard about uh, hantavirus killing three people who had visited Yosemite this summer. Uh, 
people have been dying in North Texas of West Nile fever. I think in the Dallas area alone, there have been 15 people who've died of, of West Nile fever in uh, just since July. Um, there has been um, an Ebola outbreak again in Central Africa. The Democratic Republic of the Congo ha has an Ebola outbreak that's killed uh, three dozen people, I think, by now, and it's still going on. There was another Ebola outbreak across the border in, in Uganda, unrelated to the spillover that had caused the, the uh, outbreak in uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo. That one has, has been ended. So these things are, are happening. This is like a drumbeat of, of disease um, outbreaks and, and small crises. There is another on the Arabian Peninsula. There is a, a virus that emerged that closely resembles the SARS virus, belongs to the same family. Coronavirus is the SARS virus that really scared the disease experts back in 2003. This new SARS-like virus out of uh, the Arabian Peninsula has only killed one person. It's put another man in the hospital in Britain. But scientists all over the world are watching it carefully. Why are they watching it carefully? Because they know that the next big one could look something like that. So, um, so there's this, as I say, a drumbeat of these things. Um, those diseases that I've mentioned uh, all have two things in common. They all come out of wildlife. They emerge from non-human animals. And among those that I mentioned, they're all caused by viruses. And that's the particular profile of the, the scariest of, of the, the exemplars of this phenomenon. Uh, the scientists have a fancy name for it. Uh, as Barbara mentioned, they call these animal infections that pass into humans zoonoses. A virus or it can be other forms of infectious bug. It can be uh, a bacterium. It could be a, a protozoan, like uh, the, the creatures that cause malaria. Uh, it could be a fungus. It could be a worm. Uh, uh, it could be something called a prion, which causes mad cow disease and uh, Creutzfeldt-Jakob syndrome. But usually it's a virus. Viruses, more than anything, uh, cause these. Um, and they pass from animals into humans. They don't always cause disease. Sometimes they become uh, harmless passengers in humans. There's, uh, there's, there's a virus that I talk about in the book, and I couldn't resist it because it's got such a wonderfully gruesome name. And, and you have to find the light side of this subject where you can find it. Um, and with all due respect to, to um, to the people who suffer, the people who die. And, and there are a lot of deaths in this book. It's strictly nonfiction. There are a lot of deaths, and I respect that. But still, still, I didn't want this book to be just a painful, gruesome duty, just an important, scary book. I also wanted it to be a pleasurable reading experience. I wanted it to be a page turner. I wanted it to have moments of suspense have mystery and discovery, moments of heroism by some of these scientists who are out studying this sort of thing. And yes, even some, some moments of humor. Um, it's not a very funny book, um, but I hope it might be the funniest book about Ebola you ever read. <laughs> so the, uh, as I said, some of these um, bugs when they pass into humans, are harmless. But often they're not. If the zoonosis passes into humans and causes mayhem there, then we call it a zoonotic disease. And 60% of the infectious diseases of humans are zoonotic diseases. And the other 40%, everything comes from somewhere. And the other 40% are probably um, of zoonotic, <coughs> excuse me, of zoonotic origin in the broader sense. Um, for instance, measles. Measles is only a disease of humans. Where did it come from? It probably came from a virus that causes the disease rinderpest in, in hoofed animals in Africa. But it has been in humans long enough that it has evolved and become adapted specifically to humans. Uh, so it's different. It's different enough from rinderpest that it's considered uh, and functions as a uniquely human virus. 
But the 60% that are considered zoonotic uh, are passing back and forth.